I want to talk to you this morning about knowing who your opposition is. Amen? <laughs> knowing your opposition. Do you know who your opposition is? Yes. Amen. Matthew chapter 6, I want us to look at verse 8 through 15. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you in the name that is above every day. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Speak through these lips of clay unto your people. Thank you, Father, for giving illumination to my mind and direction to my spirit. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Eighth verse, sixth chapter of Matthew, Jesus is speaking. Be not you therefore like unto them. For your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask Him. You still have to ask. Yes. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. Now I want you to notice this part. Thy kingdom come. Jesus was God's kingdom that come to the earth. Amen. Amen. Remember what Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil? Yes. Jesus brought heaven to the earth. That's what we're supposed to do. Are you hearing me? Yes. A lot of people say, well, I want the power of God demonstrated in my life. It will never be demonstrated until you speak and do something. Oh, yes. A lot of people say, I want to see God. God's power is not going to move in your life. You just go home and go to work and never mention the name of Jesus. Never ask somebody, oh. can I pray for you? You will never see God's power in your life. Yeah. I mean, there are actually people that say, oh, I want the power of God. It will never be demonstrated if you don't do nothing. Amen. Right. You know why some of these great men and women of the past where God's power just showed up? Because they were busy about the Father's business. Amen. Yeah. God's power just doesn't come up on somebody passive people. Right. Oh, thank you, Lord. Lord, that His power comes upon active people. Yeah. Amen. Well, see, Jesus was active. Jesus said, pray this way. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Did you know there's many people across the United States and the world that have no idea what the will of God is? Now, I want you to notice something. It says, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. You need to know your opposition. God is for you. Listen to me. Get, get your mind renewed with the Word of God. God is for you and not against you. Amen. Amen. He has great plans for you. But then you've got your part to play too. Amen. A lot of people just say, well, if the Lord wants to bless me, He'll bless me. He doesn't work that way. That's right. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. The Lord just brought this to me. What about... The person that's working at the job said, well, if the employer, if the boss wants to bless me, he'll bless me. He never will bless you if you don't show up at work right. and you're good on your job. Yeah. Amen? Right. It's amazing how foolish we do things. When it comes to praying for the sick, and I'm going to get into it, have you ever heard somebody pray, Lord, if it be your will, heal this body? Now, I'm not trying to be ugly. You understand that. I'm giving you that secret praying. Amen. That person don't know the Bible and don't know Jesus. Come on. Amen. Now don't get me wrong. You want me to tell you why they pray like that? Because they prayed like that in the past and didn't receive anything. Yeah. And the reason why they didn't receive anything is because first, either they weren't praying in faith and God's a faith God. Yeah. And second, there are conditions that stop God from flowing in our bodies or in our lives. But that doesn't mean it's not his will. See, conditions must first be met. Is there unforgiveness? Is there disobedience? There, there's a whole... Listen, friends. We just seem to think, well, if the Lord wanted to do it, he would have did it. Well, God wants to do a lot of things. Right. Man. But a lot of those things are conditional. And we're going to look 
take some of that in the Bible. But there's many across the United States and the world that have not heard the true gospel. That's right. They've heard a watered-down gospel. About 80% religion and 20% gospel. Are you hearing me? But Jesus is the same. My Bible tells me, and I don't know what Bible other people have, but my Bible tells me I am the Malachi 3 6. I am the Lord God. I change not. Yeah. You know who changes? Our flaky minds. Right. When we don't see a miracle, or we are when our prayer is not answered, it's not the will of God. It must not be God's will. Well, pray that way, you never will see the power of God. Because all of that is, listen, is uncertainty and doubt and unbelief. He doesn't move in those avenues. Now, what about if someone comes to you and says, well, you know, I accepted the Lord, but I don't know if I really believe that that, that is a true habit. I, I'm having problems with it. Well, see, they would lose out, wouldn't they? But one minute they're up, next minute they're down. But see, we have preconceived ideas. We think that once we get saved, we don't have to exercise our faith no more. Who told you that? Come on. Everything you receive from God is by faith. Yeah, yeah, Hebrews 11 says, without faith it is impossible to please Him. The Bible says, the just shall walk by faith. Yeah. Amen? The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. The Bible says, you stand by faith. Someone that has not preached faith has not preached the Word of God. The Bible says, Paul said in the 10th chapter, the 8th verse of Romans, that we preach the Word of faith. Why? Because the Word of God produces faith. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? The Word of God. But you know what a lot of people hear? The opinions and the theories of men and women. Yes. Instead of the Word of God. And no wonder they don't have any faith to believe God for nothing. Because they haven't been hearing the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. I believe the truth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I've seen miracles. But I never would see miracles if I prayed in doubt, in unbelief, and uncertainty. I yeah. never will see God move. Oh, thank you, Lord. What about if the sinner that came to Jesus was uncertain about him, Jesus saving him? He wouldn't have faith to be saved. Right. We would first have to arrest him and show him the word of God that Jesus loves you. He paid a price for your sins. But we seem to think once we get a, we cross that, that we don't even use our faith no more for nothing else. Who told you that? You know why some Christians are more blessed than others? Because they believe God. Amen. God's not a respecter of persons. The one who believes Him and thanks Him. Let me tell you how to get the power of God in your life. Whatever you want or need from God, begin to thank Him before you see it. Every day till it's manifested. You're giving thanks in before you ever see something. And thanksgiving puts you in expectancy, which is faith. Amen. You want God's power to be manifested? Start thanking Him for whatever you want and praising Him in a calm. Yeah. Amen. I like what you said earlier, sister. Uh, what was it? Your hip? Your hip? We laid hands on you how long ago? Last October. Last October, we laid hands on her. Jesus laid hands on you. Glory. She said three months later, it just disappeared. Amen. I was going to have you to testify, but see, as long as you keep the switch of faith on, some people have the notion, well, I feel just like I did when I left. I must not have got it. No, you didn't. You just threw it down. Amen. The Bible says, he that believeth hath. Yeah. Well, your body has nothing to do with your having or receiving from God. It does for a lot of people. A lot of people, they feel good. Oh, I feel like God hurt me. Well, what about if you felt like God didn't hurt you? Did He still hear you? Yes, He did. Your feelings has nothing to do with God's Word. And so many people go by their flaky flesh, their flaky feelings, Instead of the word of God. The Bible says let God be true and let every man be a liar. The Bible says, listen to me, that he's magnified his word above what? His name. The Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie. 
If the Word of God says it, I believe it, and that settles it. You want me to tell you what? Defeat so many Christians, if they don't see something immediately, or feel something immediately, or if the circumstances don't change, when they think it should have already changed, they throw their faith away. Amen. And when you do that, the miracle just stopped behind the scenes. God is a miracle worker. Hallelujah. Don't you just love him so? He's a miracle worker. Amen. Amen? The devil's defeated. So Jesus said here, verse 10, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. God wants his will consummated in the earth. Oh, thank you, Lord. And the Holy Ghost just brought this to me. And the way his will is going to be consummated in the earth is through you. Amen. If you don't do nothing, it'll never be consummated. It'll never come to completion if you don't do nothing. If you don't yield to the Spirit of God, if you don't preach or tell your testimony about Jesus, if you don't pray for the sick, whoever you come across, don't always call the pastor. He said in the 16th chapter, of Mark, it says these signs, starting with the 15th verse, all the way to the 18th verse, it says these signs shall follow them that believe. Yes. It didn't say preachers. It will, it will follow preachers. But you have to follow. Oh, thank you, Lord. It don't follow every preacher. Come on. Put the Lord. It don't follow every preacher because they don't believe it. That's why they don't practice it in their church. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Somebody is not going to practice something they don't believe. Right. Amen? Yeah. You are a believer. Yeah. You lay hands on the sick with boldness and in faith and with authority. And devils and sickness will leave. Yeah. You have authority. Yeah. If you've been born again and washed through the blood of the Lamb of God, the purest blood there is that washes my sin all the way, well then you have authority. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. If you don't exercise it, it won't help no one. Amen? Jesus wants His will consummated in the earth, but it will never be consummated if we talk and take sides against the Bible and don't do nothing. Amen. There's going to be a day, my brother and sister, you're going to stand before Him. Every one of you. Amen. And don't think you're going to, and, and if you haven't done His will, you're not going to see a smile. You're going to see another side of it. Amen. Those that do his will say, enter in, good and faithful servant. But those that don't, he's going to look at them differently. Just like when a boss calls a worker in the office and says, look, I'm going to promote you. You've done a good job, man. You're here before we open and even, and you're here after we close. You do a good job, like your personality. Customers just told me, man, they just like you. They, like, they want you to help them. But here, here comes another guy says, listen, I don't know why you're late. You're tardy for work all the time. His expression on that boss who stays is different to the one that's tardy, the one that's late, where the attitude is bad than the other guy. Yeah. His expression on the first guy was like, man, I appreciate your work. The other guy, different. Are you here? You're going to stand before him one day. I want him to look at me and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You overcame. You overcame like I told you to overcome in the book of Revelation. Amen? Amen? Not everything is going to be honky-dory. And you're not, not every day is going to be flowery beds of ease. But you can have that on the inside, but it won't always be around your surroundings. That's right. That's when you've got to overcome. When the devil tries to attack your body or your mind, are you just going to lay down? No, you say, no, you don't. In Jesus' name. You got to use authority. Yeah. Right. Oh, it feels good to know this advice. You know, I told y'all not to. Oh, I don't know. Oh, three days ago, I guess it was. Time goes by so quick, don't it? Yeah. Well, anyway, the devil tried to give me a headache all day, and I would put my hand. I'm going to teach you something if you don't know how to resist the devil. And I would lay my hands and I'd say, "Devil, I bind you. I break your power in Jesus' name." Devil headache, go from me. Go from me in Jesus' name. Yes. Leave the earth. Boom, let it go. Yes. Lord. Come back. Uh -huh. Well, did the did, did, did devil leave Jesus the first time? Nope. Uh -huh. He didn't, did he? But eventually he did. I did that all day. But victory's mine. What did I do, Dale? I'm an overcomer. 
overcome. Amen? Yes. You will never overcome the devil if you don't fight. Come on, man. Right. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, yes. but against principalities, demons, against, there it is, Madonna's good, isn't she? <laughs> against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what you, if you're wrestling with someone else or have a problem with someone else, the devil's got you deceived. And the devil knows how to work through people to get to you if you're fleshly. That's right. Amen. I'm talking to the spiritual man and woman in Christ Jesus. The fleshly man and woman, they have no authority. They will be devoured. I'm talking to someone that wants to go forward in Christ Jesus. That's what wants to walk in love. Wants to forgive others. Because you're going to have people that say against you, do your own. Still got to love them. Still got to love them. Amen. Because many were your sins. Amen. Amen. Many was my sins and the Lord forgave me. Amen. And I in return have to forgive others. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, with that in mind, the only way that God's kingdom is going to ever be consummated and come to completion is through you. You can either be a... Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. You're going to choose being a Christian to either be a passive or an active. I choose to be an active because I want heaven to look down and say, Have you seen that guy, Dennis Phillips? Praise God. He's about the Father's business. Yes. Instead of looking down there and saying, I got a bit of he's just so passive, he don't never do nothing. He just goes to church and goes about his business, goes back to church, sits on the pew, and don't do anything. Come on. I want heaven to recognize me. Yes. Amen. Amen. Angels know those that are active. Angels know you. God knows you if you're busy or not. There are some people that come to church never mention the name of Jesus to no one, not even their friends. Man. I put a question sometimes if those people are really saved. Because Jesus said, those that deny me, I will deny them. That's right. Jesus said, those that confess me before men, I will confess him or her before my Father which is in heaven. Yeah. Amen? Amen? It's time to get busy. It's time to get busy. Yeah. Now go with me to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3 real quickly. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 John chapter 3, look at verse 8 through 10. He that committed sin is of the devil. But brother Dennis, now we all sin. The reason why they talk that way is because they want to sin. Are you here? When somebody comes up to you and says, now, we, we all sin, you know why they're telling you that? Because they don't want to change their lifestyle. Amen. That's why. They don't want to change it. They love their lifestyle of sin. The Bible says in 1 John 3, 8, he that committed sin is of the devil. That's right. Yeah. For the devil sinned it from the beginning. For this purpose, look at it, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. He wants you to pick up where he left off at. Yeah. Every one of you. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, or another translation says does not practice sin. We might miss it, yes. We might trip up, say something we shouldn't have said, or do something we shouldn't do. But what happens? Lord, forgive me. Amen. 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 Well, he will see, the King James says, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Have you been born of God? Yes. I mean, come on now, be real with yourself. Well, another translation might say, whosoever is born of God does not practice sin. Does it mean, like, we all miss it here and there. But if you keep practicing sin, there's something wrong there. Amen. You just might know Jesus up here. 
I like something that John Wesley once said, the founder of the Methodist Church. He said, the devil has given a substitute for faith to the church, one that looks and sounds so much like faith that few Christians can tell the difference. Amen. Yeah. You know what he called it? Mental ascent. Many people in the church are mentally agree. Yeah, I believe in Jesus. I believe the Word of God. I believe that He heals and does miracles today. They only believe it in their head. They mentally assent to the Word of God. But they never really believe in their heart. Amen. But for some reason or another, I can't have it. The heart says, yes, I can. Many people live here instead of out of their heart, their spirit. Well, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed, the Holy Ghost, the new birth, remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Yeah. Now look at verse 10. In this the children of God are manifested, or manifest, and the children of the devil. There it is, children of the devil. Whoso, whosoever does not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Those that don't love others, let me, I'm just giving you the Bible, okay? Don't throw a stone at me. Those that don't love others, their enemies, is not born of God. That's what it says, isn't it? You ever, you ever heard of the expression, and I heard it, and we were wrong. We all children of God. Telling people even in the world, no, we're not. The Bible says here, in this, the children of God are manifested. The children of who? The devil. What did Jesus say in John 8, 44? You of your father, the religious people, the devil, the lust of your father, will you do? No, those that have not been born again by the blood of the Lamb, God's not their father. See how we heard things and we bring it into the church. Well, you can be sick beside a drug addict or someone that doesn't know Jesus. They can be a good person. They just never accepted Jesus and say, this is my brother in the Lord here. You just told a lie. Amen. No one's my brother in the Lord or my sister in the Lord unless they're born again by the Spirit of God. Yeah. You see how we said things and done things that just religious, it sounds good, but it's wrong. Amen? What did he say here? The children of God are manifest and the children of the devil, isn't it? Those that have been born again are children of God. Amen? And religion, by the way, does it make you a child of God? Amen. Are you here? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, looking at verse 8, I want you to get this. For this purpose, the Son of God is, was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. When you were born again, for this purpose, you are manifested. You were born again to destroy the works of the devil. You're here for that. And one of these days, when it's all said and done, and our generation's gone like the previous, you stand before God. You were lazy. Or will he say, well done. Thou good and active and faithful servant, you won many souls and testified for me. You prayed for the sick. You visited. You went to prison You and, and visited those in prison. You gave people food for me. Thank you. Well done. You did that in my behalf. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord. But there be those that will get a different saying. And he'll say, depart from me, you curse into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels according to the 25th chapter of Matthew when he have all the nations and he will divide them as the sheep from the goats. And then he looks and he says, I was hungry and you fed me not. I was hungry and a thirst and you, gave, you fed me not. You gave me no drink and I was in prison and you visited me. I was sick and you came not unto me. And then they said, when did we see thee a hunger or a thirst or a prison? Or, or sick and visited thee. And he said, as, as you've done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. Yes. 25th chapter of Matthew, there it is. He shall divide the sheep from the goats. And then the others say, when did we see thee? And he said, hey, when you didn't do it unto one of the least of my brethren, you did it not unto me. 
you better be careful how you treat. Listen to me. According to that 25th chapter, many Christians or the devil tries to avoid that. You better be careful how you treat other Christians even if they don't agree with you. Amen. What's that? That's right. Did you hear what this brother said when I said be careful how you treat other Christians? He said even as how you think of them. Yes. Amen. You hear me? Be careful who you talk about or what you do with another brethren or sister. Because you remember Paul on the road to Damascus in the ninth chapter of Acts, he's going, Saul was going to persecute the church in Damascus. Yes. That great light shone from heaven. He couldn't see it, blinded him because of the glory of the light. He said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He said, who art thou, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus whom thou persecutest. Somebody says, how does he persecute Jesus? Because he was going to persecute Jesus' church. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's been many people in a church, we're talking about brethren, there has been churches to split up because someone in the church didn't walk in love. Thank God we're going to walk in love here. Don't forget it. Because maybe a pastor said something or did something that one person didn't like. But they never look about, they don't know what that pastor does. Can they come and preach the gospel? Can they come and lay hands on the sick? Do they go visit? You know, it's amazing what the, can they keep the church together? See, when a pastor comes into a church, he's anointed by the Spirit of God to keep the church together and to operate the church. And those same people, you have seen churches split because someone in a church will begin to open their mouth wide yes. and say something Amen. that maybe the pastor didn't say something or do something right. Well, you try to get them up and do what that pastor's doing and the church will just go to nothing. Yes. Are you hearing me? Because first of all, the Spirit of God is not on that person. The devil is. Amen. And the Spirit of God, whoever God calls to be a pastor of the church, He's anointed to keep the flock together and to feed the flock. Amen. 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 Many churches, because somebody gets, because somebody wouldn't agree with the pastor. Can I tell you this? There'll be things maybe I'll say or do that you might not agree with. That's between you and God. You're to leave it alone. Amen. Amen. Are you hearing me? You're going to leave it alone because if you keep on messing with it, you're going to give place to the devil. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, 27, neither give place to the devil. And it won't be long when your fellowship with God is broken because you're coming against the messenger of the church. And then your fellowship with God, your salvation is at risk. Amen. 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 It goes back to that 25th chapter of Matthew. When Jesus said, as you've done it in one of the, le the least of these, my brethren, you've done it in Be careful how you treat other Christians. Because it can keep you from healing. Well, there you go. It can keep you from walking in divine health. All right. It can keep you from having strength and peace in your mind. All right. Heal, the Bible says in Proverbs, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his soul from troubles. Amen. 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 Be careful, my dear brother, especially of the household of faith. Back when I was doing cable, I'd go into someone's house. Her name was Miss Sawyer. She would pray for me. Miss Baptist woman. I said, pray for me. I was in there and I prayed. I said, pray for me. She went to a Baptist church, but man, she had the Holy Ghost. She was filled with God's presence. She had prayed for me. I could feel the power of God in the atmosphere. And I just soak in and said, wow, I like this. She was in her 80s. And I told her, I said, if you ever want me to come put an outlet in your house, I left my phone number because we can do that. Yeah. Uh, we got permission to do that from the company. I said, call me and I'll save you the money. Why? Because the Bible says in the book of Galatians, let us do good unto all men, especially, listen, Especially those of the household of faith. I'm going to be, I'm going to do good to sinner men. I'm going to do good to other people because I'm a testimony for Jesus. Yes. I'm the light. Amen. But I'm going to bend over backwards for the people of God, Amen. whether they come to this assembly or another. Come on. Amen. They're my brother and sister. I'm someone that's a Christian. If I can do it. I said, Miss Sauter, 
if you ever want to outlet put in, there's my number. You call me and I'll do it and I'll save you the money. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Especially those of the household of faith. And we wonder sometimes, listen, we're talking about his kingdom. That's why sometimes healing doesn't work. And when we pray for someone to be healed, they don't get healed. We go away walking thinking, well, it must not be the will of God. No, you don't know what's going on in that person's life. They might have stubbornness and rebellion in them. And they might not forgive someone. And that's the automatic hindrance to the power of God. Amen. And so we play it all. Well, it must not be the Lord's will. Instead of searching the scriptures and finding out. Amen? Amen. You know, it's just like I told you before, you know, about John Lake praying for this guy. And he owed his sister-in-law 5000 And Lake didn't know it, but it kept coming up before him. He says, I can't pray for you. The man wouldn't have received anything. The Holy Ghost showed John Lake. He said, what's this 5000 He says, well, I held back 5000 when I liquidated the business. Heard his brother die. Well, that wasn't agreed upon. But when he wrote, sent the check out through the mail, the disease, the sickness left his body. And then you remember that time I was telling you about the time with a man that, that, that worked at an oil company that didn't pay tithes. He had ulcers of the stomach, ate baby food for two years. Now, he was a Christian, ate baby food for two years because he's got a cluster of ulcers in his stomach. He can't eat nothing else. He comes up to the front to be prayed for and the Lord gave Brother Irwin, a word of knowledge, says he doesn't pay tithes. He's been in the church for many years, works for an oil company, and the Lord wasn't going to heal this man because he never supported the church. Listen, your tithes belongs to God. Yeah. Amen. It's not yours, it's not mine. Amen. I, somebody says, well, I'm not going to give it. Well, then don't give it. Be cursed then. Amen. I don't understand. Why wouldn't somebody not want to give tithes? It's a hard issue. So you see why healing don't always work? And so this man didn't pay tithes. He says, now I don't mean to embarrass you. The pastor's right here. He said, but you don't pay tithes. He said, no. He said, well, I can't minister to you. The Holy Ghost won't let me. He said, well, I'm going to start doing better. I'm going to start paying the tithes. He laid hands on him, commanded his stomach to be healed, you know, rebuked the devil. He said, go eat a T-bone steak. After two years of eating baby food, he went and ate a T-bone steak and was completely healed of ulcers of the stomach. Now, would he have been healed if he kept rebelling and his heart says, no, I'm not going to do it? Well, certainly not. Is healing for us? Is it the will of God? Certainly it is. Is It is God's will to heal everyone. But everyone will not be healed. Why? Conditions must first be met. Yeah. Did you get it? Conditions must first be met for God's power to flow into your body. Wow. See, we never think about that. Because you know why? Many people won't know it. They don't want to do the Word of God. We don't. We just want God to come and bless me. Lord, bless my family. Bless my finances. Bless my body. Bless my health. But they don't want to do nothing. Come on. It doesn't work like that in God's kingdom. Amen. It doesn't work like that. If I want to enjoy health, man, listen, it feels good to be clean on the inside. What do you mean, Brother Dennis? I obey. There's not nothing in me turning around right now where the Lord said, I've been dealing with you about this. You ain't done it yet. Or you haven't done it yet. No, I don't have that going on in me. Why? I'm clean on the inside. When the master speaks, yes, Lord, what do I need to do? I go do it. Because if I don't go do it, well, then, man, it's on the inside of me and I don't have no peace. I've been there. All right. You know, it's just like the pair of pants I had one time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I ordered some through eBay. Well, I just tell all, all myself, I don't mind. I ordered some through eBay. Well, get these pretty cheap. They were lucky pants. I said, yeah, praise God. And, uh, and they come in. I said, these things seem two inches smaller either way. Wasted. I said, they ripped me off. I said, well, I know what I do. I'll just go down. I mean, it's lucky brand. So I'll go down to Dillard's. 
spend good money on a pair and take my tags off, get all the ones on that one, and put them on the ones. Oh, brother. Don't ever do that. Don't ever, ever do that. The Holy Ghost, I couldn't hardly sleep at night after I did it. I went out there, and I knew on the inside, I had something going. I said, well, Lord, it's lucky brain the same thing. Listen, don't try to argue with God. Amen. Just obey. Amen. And I said, Lord, I got lucky in the same size. I'm taking the same brand, the same brand, but it was a different. Uh, one might have been low rise and one might have been mid, you know. I, that was the only difference. And I said, Lord, I'm putting it in this, the same brand. And I'm just going to get these and take these back and get my money back for that. Boy, I got a whipping, whip, whip, whip. I went back up there, couldn't wait to get back and pay full money for them. Says, where's them? I found them. There they are. Took them back up to the cashier. I said, I want to buy them. I bought them back. Let me tell you some things I learned over the years. What do you mean? When I left out of there, peace. Yes. Lord, forgive me for being ignorant. Amen. You know what I was doing? I was deceiving some a company. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Somebody says, now that don't mean nothing. You're not close to God. You live in the flesh. You live in the carnal. And the Holy Ghost wouldn't let, I would have not had no sleep. I would have gave 500 bucks for the pants. Why? Because my conscience, it feels good on the inside that my conscience is clean. That's what feels good. That's why God flows to me. Now, if I wouldn't have went back and got those pants and said, no, Lord, they're the same brand, I'm not going to do it. There would have been open rebellion before God. God would have used me, and I would have become sick. I would have become sick with an open door to the enemy because of some kind of foolishness I did. Amen. Are you hearing me? See, there are little things that keep us from being healed. Is healing the will of God? Yes. Will all be healed? No. That sounds like what? Because not all are right with God. Are you here? The Bible says a liar will not go unpunished. How many times do you hear people say all the time, tell them I'm not here. In the mind of God, God looks down and says, man, you're lying. God doesn't think like you think. God thinks one thing. His word. He's holy. He's not like you and I. Amen. Yeah, but Brother Dennis, I want a blessing. Yeah, well, you need to go talk to God. I don't give blessings. He does. Amen. 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 I just do my best to obey and do the works. Yeah. Do what he's called me to do because wherever he leads me, I will follow I'm going with him. Amen. I want him to look at me one day when I depart from this tabernacle and look at me. And, the, and, the, and there's an announcement in heaven. Dennis is coming from the earth. Get his family ready. And all heaven begins to rejoice. Here comes the preacher that, that sought God and loved people. Amen. But you know, there's a lot of people, you know, they love the world and flesh and money and things more than the living God. That's, that's true, ain't it, Amen. I love Jesus more than I love anybody. And you can tell those that love Jesus, it eventually show up. Amen? Amen? Don't you love him? Are you here to destroy the works of the devil? Yeah. Yes. Are you going to do it? Yes. You better. You want to go to heaven? Yes. I don't know everything. But I'm going to stay on the side of safety. I'm going to obey. Some people say, well, I believe in Jesus and he's my Lord and Savior and you're in open rebellion. Uh, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes when you die. Come on. I'm going to stay over here and obey God and do the Bible and love my enemies and pray for them and, and, and do what I know to do, do what I know to do. Why? Because I'm on good and safe ground. Than being over here and doing my thing and being rebellious in my heart toward God. That's right. 
There's, there's some people in here right now, you know in your heart you've done things that weren't right. The Holy Ghost has shown you that, and you just rebel, rebel, and rebel. Let me tell you, that will create a sickness and a disease in your body for the devil to come in and torment you. Yes. And there will be no deliverance or healing for you until you get things right. Yes. You know, it's just like that woman. Is, God, is it God's will to heal everyone? Yes. Will everyone be healed? No, because conditions have to be met first for God to heal them. It's just like that woman that had that rare disease I was telling you about. Uh, uh, only about five in the world that had her disease. Medical science didn't know no much about it. She was in a meeting like this, hearing that you have to forgive. You know, when Jesus said over there in Mark 11, 24, what things whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. The very next verse, Jesus said, and when you stand praying, forgive if you have all against any. Yes. Why did he put that in there about prayer? Because that's the number one hindrance. That keeps people from receiving from God and they don't want to forgive nothing. They want to be forgiven, but they don't want to forgive. And that woman up in Newton called her, her, her brother, never didn't talk to him, I think, in 29 or 30 years. She says, before I can be healed of this rare disease, I'm going to have to get things right with my brother. She called up to New York State, got a hold of her brother, asked her brother to forgive her, and they made amends. No man had to lay hands on her. The disease departed. Amen. Conditions must be met before you are blessed. Amen. 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 You don't just think you can go out there and do anything that your fancy pleases, do you? I know I can. You hear me? I get in trouble. <clears throat> are you still with me or have you checked out? Stay with me. Amen? Now, you're, you know what John 10.10 10 says. I want to renew your minds, especially new people that's been here, with the Word of God. Because so many people have got so much clutter in their minds, so much religion packed in there instead of the New Testament. John 10.10 10 says, and you know it. You ought to know it in here by now. Jesus is speaking in John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief? Who's the thief? God. Is God a thief? Well, then why do you say, why do you say, well, I'm suffering this, this sickness to be the will of God? Well, if God is putting a sickness on you, then he's a thief. He's still in your health. The thief, that's not God, cometh not. What is Satan's will? Satan's will, the devil's will is, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. That is Satan's will. Steal, kill, and to destroy. What's the last enemy got to be put underfoot? You know that? Death. The Bible says death. Physical death is the last enemy. That will be put underfoot. The Bible says, you ever heard this? Well, it was his time to go and God just took him on out. <laughs> no, he didn't meet conditions or she didn't meet conditions. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, why shouldest thou die before thy time? Amen. And you hear people say, people that say this, well, when it comes to my time to die, I'll go no matter what I do. I don't, I'm being honest with you. You go out there and you do something like bungee jump or go out there and play Russian roulette. Well, when it comes to my time to go, I go. And boom, and you're gone. No, you could have still lived if you would have acted right. Amen. Amen. Amen? It's amazing how we got so much clutter of preconceived ideas in our mind that people actually believe. Yes, sir. But God's not a thief. Now here's why Jesus came on the scene. Remember my text? Thy will be done in earth as it is in the world called heaven. I am come that they might have life that is eternal life and the effects of it and that they might have it. What? More abundantly. You talk to some people, you would think they're going through oh, and they say, oh, I'm doing this for the will of God. I don't say that to them. I ain't got time to preach to them. 
Some people got so many preconceived ideas in their mind, you can't, if you give them the Bible, they'll think you're wrong. Are you hearing me? Now, with that in mind, go to Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13, real quickly. I tell people, what does the Bible say? Not man. What does the Bible have to say? Amen. What I say is unimportant. Amen. But what God's Word says is important. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, Luke chapter 13, verse 10 through 17. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. When she, when she saw Jesus, excuse me, and when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands in the plural on her. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue, the religious people get mad when God moves. Amen. This is the ruler of the synagogue. The religious man. He got mad. Why? Because God moves. Listen, you start moving in the spirit of God, religious people don't like it. Come on. They say, I saw the devil. And now they're getting close to blasphemy. Amen. Come on. Remember that, what Jesus said? Because they were accusing Jesus for casting out devils by Beelzebub. You know what blasphemy is? It's, it's giving the devil credit for something that the spirit of God does. Because Jesus said, if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. And Jesus went on to tell them, all manner of sin shall be forgiven among men, but he that speaks blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall never have forgiveness in this world and the world to come. What was he doing? You're taking the credit away from God and giving it to the devil. I just like somebody lays hands on someone and they were healed instantly. Somebody says, I ain't of God, that's of the devil. They just blasphemed against the Holy Ghost. Because it was the Spirit of God that made that body heat well, not the Spirit of the devil. See, anything that you give the devil credit for that the Holy Ghost did, you're in dangerous territory. Dangerous. Amen. Amen. So, oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, I love the Holy Ghost. I love flowing with God. Amen. The Holy Ghost just spoke to me and says many people need to keep their mouths shut. Come on. Come on. Your mouth can defeat you. Yeah. Ooh, man, I love the Spirit of God. You know where I've missed it at the most is with this. Yeah, man. I've missed it with the, Will you tell you what I had to repent the most of than anything? It's right here. Come on. It's mouth. If we keep our mouths shut, we'll be okay. Yes. Especially if you don't understand something. You, if you don't understand something, you need to be quiet about it. Amen. For you say something you shouldn't be saying. Amen. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> now where are we? Verse 14. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation this religious person because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day only. I like what Jesus told this religious guy. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman in the world, she's more precious than that, that ox and that donkey, ought not this woman being the daughter of Abraham, who God has found? A lot of people read it that way. No, Jesus said, who Satan has found, lo, these 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed. And all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Who bound this woman? Satan. Satan. Who is binding men and women today? Satan. They will not receive a healing until they line up with the Word of God, though. Amen. 
That's right. Satan uses offense. <laughs> what does Acts 10 38 say? I can quote it. I want you to see it. Redonna, put that up. Acts 10 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing. What? And healing. Oh, some of them. That's God's will. And healing all that were oppressed of who? God? The devil. the devil. For God was with him. Get your minds renewed. Know who your opposition is. When you do, it'll be easier for you to believe. But as long as you think you're suffering something for the will of God, you're not going to be able to believe God. Right. Are you hearing me? But when you know that the attack comes from the enemy, then you can say, no, in Jesus' name, like I did those headaches the devil was trying to put on me. I never had one because I wouldn't receive it. Right here, so brother this, but you said you was being attacked. Yeah, I've been attacked, but I never accepted it. Amen. Right here. I just stand my ground. No, you don't, Jesus' name, you dumb thing. Leave me. You can call the devil dumb. Because anybody that would rebel at, against God in heaven would have seen God and the glories of heaven and would rebel against the Creator is a dumb being. Amen. And you got people following him. Somebody says, Brother Dennis, you're the weirdest preacher I've ever heard. Thank you. Amen. I take that as a compliment. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The devil bound this woman. Right? Last verse of Scripture. Go with me to John 21, 25. John 21, 25. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. He did so much good for humanity that he just saw fit to give us what we have. But he did so much that you, not, you and I will never know till we get to heaven. Even the world itself couldn't contain the books. Why? That thy kingdom come, be done in this world as it is in heaven. And the way that he's going to consummate it is through you and I. Amen. Through you and I. You can either say yes to Jesus. And enjoy life with peace on the inside and a grin and a hop and skill and see Him do miracles through you. And see people get saved and come to the Lord. Or you can, um, I'm just going to do my thing. And take a chance of whether or not you go to heaven. I doubt those kind of really do go to heaven. Because God looks, boom, straight at the heart. Your heart is deceitful toward me. You don't love me. You love the world and money and flesh and men and women and things of the world materialism more than you love the living God. And I've told you this and I'll tell you again. If there's, uh, I said this before and, I, and I'm closing, but if there's a billion dollars here and Jesus over here and the Lord said, take your pick and you even thought about that money you sin greatly. Just thinking and looking, you have sinned a great sin against the only one because that money's not going with you. And I said one day, listen to me, I said one day, I said, Lord, a lot of people have left you over money that I was thinking about. And you know what the Holy Ghost said to me? He says, no, son, a lot of people has left me over a man or a woman. Yes. You can set a beautiful woman or a handsome man, and all of a sudden, in Jesus over there, there are some people that walk with God that actually met someone and took them out of church. Yes. And they went the way of a man or a woman was it was to their, to, to their destruction. A man and not woman, if they don't love Jesus and in love with him, you have no business messing with them. Amen. 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 Oh, thank you, Lord. Well, here's what the Holy Ghost just said. If you date or know or, or courting, or if you go to meet a man and a woman and they start bringing you and pulling you away from Jesus, say bye. Because if you don't, they're going to lead to your destruction. There ain't but one that you have an allegiance to. 
And that's Jesus Christ. Even to Mary, Jesus is the head. Amen. You are to obey Him in all things. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, how many of you here still love Brother Dennis? Amen. Let me see. Amen. Well, let's say about two or three of them needs to come down to our <laughs> I'm thinking that. Praise God. Well, I, this is the reason why I give you the truth, my brother and sisters, is because I love you. Amen. When I'm in heaven, and I'm in heaven, I want to see every one of you there. Yeah, right. Amen. And you know what separates us from the Lord God? Sin. Yeah. Rebellion. Unforgiveness is what separates us from God. And I hate to know, there will be those one day that will not go to heaven because they wouldn't forgive someone. They just wouldn't forgive someone. You mean, Brother Dennis, I don't believe that. You don't believe the Bible then. Read the 18th chapter of Matthew. I'll let you read it. Amen. Many more. With every head bowed and every eye closed, please.